Don't forget when you're changing your gearing, you're messing with your speedo. The 300L is five miles an hour out already, but I'm not bothered because I use my Garmin for speed. Hello peeps, uh, Edinburgh trial next weekend. I'm pretty much happy with the 300. I just thought I might change one thing. So I sent off for a 13 tooth front sprocket, tenner. I thought I just might try it. I've been doing um, hill starts on the other trials, you know, a restart on a one in three hill, pulling away in second gear, and the grip is phenomenal. But I just thought I'd try a 13 tooth front sprocket and see if it's any better. You never know, it might be better, it might not. One of the biggest issues is, is there gonna be enough travel adjusting it? Because obviously a smaller sprocket gonna come out a little bit more and the chain's not new now, it's a little bit of wear in it, so it's done 6,000 miles. Anyway, we'll give it a go, we'll see how we get on. That's quite an easy little job. Um, I've not got my sprocket cover on. So I've just got to undo these 10 mil, which are 10 mil bolts, which are holding the retainer on. They're not going to be tight because that front sprocket is floating. So all that's doing is holding the retainer on. So don't go and tighten them up too much. Put it in gear so the sprocket can't turn the engine over. And out come the bolts. So this little retainer can only go on, there's only one way which is correct, but if I turn that a little bit now, it all comes off. So when you put it back, make sure you've got it right. So like, get your fingernails behind it. There we go, maybe need a screwdriver. <laughs> there we go. I've loose, already loosened the rear wheel, so I should be able to just pull that straight off. There we go. So the issue was, can I get the chain to go tight enough without taking any links out? That's what we're concerned with. So, so if I put that on and try that. There we go. So that has gone behind the, the tooth. It can't come off. And yeah, don't tighten these up too tight. Just one little nip. Stop that retainer from coming off. The next thing is, can I get the chain tight enough without taking a link out? You want your rear spindle nut loose, but not silly loose, you know, so you can still make an adjustment. But first of all, I'm gonna just, don't ever tighten these up tight. I just want to see how far I can push it out. So that doesn't. You can see the chain moving up as I do it. Because I don't want to take a link out when I'm going to throw this chain away soon. And we might just get lucky here. I've made my own little mark on the swinging arm there um, to coincide with the marks on there, which are now running out. So I can use that corner as a guide. Now that's tight. In fact, it's too tight. When I let that wheel down on the ground, it'll be too tight. So I'm happy with that. Let's back that off a bit and kind of guesstimate where it needs to be. And I'll show you how I adjust it. Try that. Just a little nip. That's it. So that's pretty much in line with the corner of that machining there. So I'll do the same the other side. Nuts up. They don't need to. And I'll show you how we check the adjustment. Okay. 
if you put your weight on the bike, that's not far out. Remember, it's better to have it a little bit loose than a bit tight. Tighten your wheel up. It's a 17 and a 24. I've got the aluminium spanners in my tool kit, but I don't want to keep getting that out. Jobs are good in. So yeah, the, the old sprocket was pretty much bollocksed anyway. And the worry was of, with the chain being 6,000 miles on it and mainly off-road, they wear a little bit, but with this new 300, they put a DID chain on, which is much, much better. So what I was worried about was a little bit of wear in the chain. Am I gonna get the sprocket on the front and adjust it up? And yes, it's, it's worked. So I've got it on. No point in taking the link out of the chain if I don't need to, because I'm gonna change it pretty soon. So, useful tip, or utter bollocks, you decide. <laughs>